Hello, I'm Conrad Swift with the Cardano Convo podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about ADAX's new DEX or decentralized exchange. Now, we all know a little bit prior that ADAX released a centralized exchange, but now it's finally released its decentralized exchange. So we're going to be talking about some of the functionalities that can be found in that DEX, such as an order book model, as well as swapping capabilities. And we're going to be talking about as well some pros and cons, some of the things I like, some of the things I'm not so fond of, where I think there's room for improvement. And of course, before we begin, I want to let you guys know that there is a like and subscribe button down below. If you click those, it really helps us out. And if you could leave a comment, that would help as well. It helps with the algorithm. And without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so to begin, if you want to get to the ADAX DEX, you'll have to go to dex.adax.pro. And once you get here, you'll see a couple of things. First, you'll get a welcome message, of course. There's a frequently asked questions section. You can click here or here to find out more. But on the left side, you'll see a total locked value for ADA slash ADAX in US dollar, which is quite interesting. You can just go hold your mouse or your cursor above it, and you'll be able to see how that has changed over time. Then to the right of that is the total locked volume in total in US dollar. And again, you can hover over it and get the same information. So if we scroll down, you'll be able to see as well the total locked value in ADA and US dollar of different tokens. Now, you're going to hear me talk about this periodically throughout this video. And that is that it's kind of feeling a little empty. And when I say it's feeling a little empty, it's, for example, I'm not seeing information on Vi Finance here or Pavia or Liquid Token or Ardana's token Dana. I'm not seeing a lot of information here, which I know, for example, there are some that are meme tokens, but it feels a little empty. But as you can see, I've got my NAMI wallet connected here. Um, when you get here to connect your wallet, you'll have to stick with NAMI. Right now, as you can see, there isn't any way to connect a Giro wallet or your CC Vault wallet. If you want to attach your Flint wallet, it doesn't seem that that's possible right now. That's not to say that it might not have it in the future, but right now that just doesn't seem to be the case. So as you can see, it'll show my total ADA value is there. Um, it just says my wallet for the NAMI wallet. And something that's interesting is you'll be able to see the social sentiment of different tokens. So here you can see ADA. Right now it's not showing any information. When I first got onto this website though, a couple days ago, there was a lot of information here. So I don't know if that's a lack of function or if it's more so a lack of people inputting information. And it's just interesting to have that there because if you're a trader, you might be trading based upon social sentiment as opposed to, let's say, technicals. So it's just interesting for a exchange to have that. Then once we're done with that, we'll check out the order book. So at the top, you'll be able to switch between swap, order book, you'll be able to see your orders. But as you can see in the top left hand corner here, I'm looking at ADA to ADAX. So you can select your market here on the very far left side. For example, if I want ADA to meld, I can do that. Or again, we'll just jump back to ADA to ADAX. Also in the middle, you'll be able to see from ADA to, and you can select what token you want. So if I want it to meld, I can do that. If I want it back to ADAX, there. And then you can see create a sell order for ADA to ADAX or buy ADA for ADAX from existing orders. So you'll have these functionalities on either side. Something that's interesting is you can click the swap sim symbol there and it will switch it. As you can see in the top left hand corner, ADA to ADAX, ADAX to ADA. So create a sell order for ADAX to ADA. And on the right, it'll be buy ADAX for ADA from existing orders. I like how it's the words are very particular because the worst thing is whenever you jump into a platform and you're trying to figure out, is this a, am I selling this token? Am I getting this token? Because it'll like not be as transparent about that. And I like that they're doing that. And I know that's more of a bare minimum thing, but you'd be surprised how many DEXs or how many centralized exchanges don't do that. So of course you'll be able to select it. Let's say I want to create a, I don't have any of that. Let's say I want to go into, I have meld in this wallet. So we'll go to meld. Say I want to create a sell order for meld. Let's say I want to sell 100 meld and the price is 0 0.2. I could place the order and it would appear there once I do. 
But next we'll click the swap because that's a lot of the functionality here. We've all seen order book models. Um, if we've ever used Binance, Coinbase, you've probably seen it. I'm noticing not a ton of a ton of orders in the deck side of this, but I don't know if that's because, for example, Mole Swap's already out there, or if it's because ADEX has kind of cannibalized itself a little bit by releasing a centralized exchange that's an order book model. So I'm not sure about that. That's something that'd be interesting to find out more about. But if we jump into the swap, you'll be able to see, for example, it's very similar to the prior model. You'll be able to see it's your wallet, what's available. And let's say I want to go from, so get, I want to get a token for Cardano. I like, I like the get and I like the for. Again, it makes it very apparent that I'm getting this token for this token. So let's say, and I like also how it has from this token to this. It makes it as easy to understand as possible. I like that. The idea behind decentralized exchanges or DeFi is to make it as easy as possible for people to use the platform. And I mean, I know that might seem just oh, just a little bit too much that, okay, you don't really, do you really need that? But in my opinion, it's great that they have that. So let's say I want to get um, 1,000 ADAX for, and it's showing 460 ADA. So if I want 100 ADAX, 60 ADA. And it shows you price per ADAX is 0.6 ADA. So, and if I want to swap those, let's say, I want to get ADA for, and let's say I've got 35 ADAX, you'll be able to swap from ADA to ADAX. So it's really interesting. Again, you can just swap between those if you want. It's very similar to the order book feel. And I kind of like that, but again, I th I kind of like the user interface from Sunday Swap a little bit better, though I do like the dark mode, but there is no way to switch between dark mode and light mode from what I've seen. Because if we jump back, there is no button for that. But once you put in orders, for example, you'd be able to go check out my orders. And for right now, it'll require me to jump in with my NAMI wallet, and I, I'm not going to, so I'll get these error messages but you would be able to look at the orders you put forward. And again, some of the things that I would recommend is just read through the FAQ. It's important to know, for example, that um, about the platform's fees, you'll need to know about collateral and NAMI wallet. And of course, you'll need to know about a lot of this information. Some of it requires you to do it in increments, so you can't just sell one ADA token or you can't just buy one ADA for one meld or whatnot, you might have to do certain orders in certain sizes. So for example, some tokens would require 100 ADA in exchange for, for like increments of 100. So I could use 100 ADA, but I couldn't do 20 ADA. I could do 200 ADA again, but not 40. So it's interesting to see how this system is working because when you're dealing with the UTXO model, it's not as simple in that regard, at least for some people, as the accounting model. And it does have its benefits, of course, but it's just something to keep in mind. I'd recommend before using this platform, reading through the FAQ. Because for example, why am I not getting, or why am I getting not enough X currency in wallet, even though there is? And so it'll walk you through. It has images and everything. It's fantastic in that regard. So to talk about some of the pros and cons, so we'll start with the pros. The things that I really like is that they've got an FAQ section. It helps to explain some of the errors you might run into, which I'm sure it helps with them not having to receive as much technical support with regards to people sending in tickets, trying to get things fixed that might not be real problems. So it's good that they've got that. For the overview, I really like this. I also like something I didn't talk about is you can see ADA to ADAX. If I choose meld and I go back, you'll see total lock value of ADA to meld in US dollar. So this will change based upon what you've been looking at. And this will as well. It's a really interesting functionality there. So that's something I like as well. I like how it's very particular with the wording. That's another pro, something I think is great is they're very upfront about their wording. Because if they're not, you might get more problems with users who might not be very well versed with DEXs or exchanges who want to use this service that run into problems. So I'm glad that they have that. 
And I also like that they have an order book as well as swap model. I think it's interesting they've got both in one. Because, for example, Mole Swap right now only has the order book model, and Sunday Swap only has the swapping model or the AMM model. So, those are some interesting things I really liked about it. I like that it's dark to begin with, though I'm not so fond that it doesn't have dark or light mode because I, I don't know who likes light mode, but I'm sure there's somebody out there who really does. So again, those are some of the positives with it. So to cover some of the negatives or cons with this, um, I don't like how I'm when I'm on the screen, I talked about how I like this. I wish I could click this and switch it so I can get all this information from one screen instead of having to go, okay, I want to see what the total lock value of ADA to Wi-Fi is. Now I have to jump over here. I have to go through here. Okay, jump back. And now I've got that information. Or if I want to know Wi-Fi to ADA, be able to jump back and forth that way. And it's, I know it's a very minute problem, but let's assume that maybe you don't have the strongest connection. Having to jump back and forth, even though it seems pretty well optimized as a website, might not be advantageous. The other con, of course, is, as I said before, it feels really empty. It's, it could be the fact, again, that they kind of followed after Sunday Swap, which was the AMM slash swapping model, and Mole Swap, which was the DEX mod, or not DEX, sorry, the order book model DEX that came out. So that might be part of why it feels a little empty. Maybe there's not as much usage on the platform just yet. And on top of that, it could have been partially that ADAX, they already cannibalized themselves a little bit with having a centralized exchange. So for example, some people, if they trust ADAX as a platform, might be willing to use a centralized exchange for their order, bu order book model and save on fees than they would to use a decentralized exchange order book model where they might have to pay a higher fee. So that's just something to think about. Um, other than that, one of the things is when I'm looking at the order book model, it would be great to be able to see, I know we've all become accustomed to it when it comes to the order book model, seeing the, the systems in place that are running. So seeing, for example, the candlestick models or graphs, seeing the buy orders to sell orders in that way. And I don't like how I can't see, for example, those representations. I know that's minute, but it's something I really look for when I look at a order book model. For example, you can go on Mole Swap. And they've got the candlesticks, they've got the graphs, they've got stuff showing the information with regards to these tokens and the total volume that's been sold within the last 24 hours, things like that. And it's something that's really interesting to me whenever I can see that. So one of the negatives is I can't see that. I do, for example, like how it's simplistic. It explains a lot of this, but it again, it feels really empty. And I don't know if they're doing this in order to make it easy to port over, for example, to mobile functionality. But as far as it goes for me, it's kind of a negative there. And the other negative is you can see it says NAMI wallet. I prefer CC Vault. So I would love to be able to use that. But right now they don't have that. And when I'm talking a lot of these negatives, it doesn't mean that it's a bad platform. What I'm saying is there's a lot of room for improvement. And I do think that ADAX will improve. ADAX has shown time and again that it's willing to take user feedback. It's working towards making the platform as, as user-friendly and as good as possible. So I have no doubt that they'll be looking into that. They'll be increasing their platform, making it better. But again, I would love to be able to have more wallets to be able to possibly use. Because if I'm a user, like I've made a video, which will be linked in the description on how to make, delegate, and use a Flint wallet, and I want to use my Flint wallet from DC Spark, okay, I've got that now. Well, now if I want to use this, I have to make a NAMI wallet or move my funds over from NAMI or recover into NAMI, whereas it'd just be so much easier for the user if I don't have to do that. And I know... I know that they know that. There's no doubt in my mind that they know as soon as they make it so that other wallets can be using their platform, then you've decreased the barrier to access to the platform and you're more likely to use it. But again, that was just one of the negatives. But that's kind of the rundown for this platform. It's There are some positives, some negatives. Um, I would recommend checking it out. And again, I would recommend reading the FAQ when you get here. It'll help explain some of these or some parts of this platform a bit more. 
But again, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. It's been quite a fun talk about the ADAX platform. And again, if you want to help us out a little bit more, we do run a Cardano stake pool called the Loops stake pool. That's L-O-O-P-S. If you want to help us out there, it helps keep everything up and running and allows us to keep making the videos, work on our project Flooftopia. And of course, if you could like and subscribe, that helps us too. comment for the algorithm. And again, thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.